Okay, welcome to another video. So you might remember not too long ago we checked out a new Arch-based distribution called Payux OS or POS for short. Now at the time we started with their flagship version which is the XFCE version and then shortly after that we checked out their GNOME version as well. So I remember making a point in the GNOME video that that leaves one more version of theirs for us to take a look at. However, since then they've just released a brand new version featuring KDE. As KDE is pretty much my desktop of choice, we're going to skip the LXQT version for now and jump straight into it with KDE. For those of you who didn't see my videos on their GNOME and XFCE versions, I'll leave links in the description below. But some of the main features of POS are that it uses ButterFS as its default file system and has auto snapshotting enabled out of the box. So not only does it look good, it's also secure and it allows you to sandbox your applications and surf anonymously. Fish is its default shell and Pacman is the default CLI package manager along with Pamac as an alternative. For GUI, use Pamac manager which has Flatpak and AUR support. So as per usual, we're going to install it natively onto the main computer and take a look around. Okay, so here we are in the live environment and the ISO size for this one is around about 2.8 GB. As usual, if you'd like to skip the installation part of these videos, there is a timestamp below. But with that out of the way, let's get moving. So it appears we have a new welcome screen, so I don't remember this being present in the previous versions. However, there doesn't seem to be too much going on with it right at the moment. So we have some community links for their Discord, Telegram and Forum. And then we have a big button in the middle to launch the Calamaris installer. Now it does make a note of saying that a few of these features are experimental. So first things first, we need to change our language from American English to British English, which is right about there and next. Okay, so I remember this from the previous versions, it lets us choose which suite of Office applications we want installed before we actually get to our desktop. Now we have options such as Abbey Word, Caligra, Ghostwriter, Gobby, LibreOffice Fresh or Still, and Zafura. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the Fresh package for a nice up-to-date version of LibreOffice. Next. Okay, so I think this is new. I don't remember the option of file managers in the previous videos. So here we can choose file managers like Dolphin, Nautilus, Nemo, Ranger, Space FM, and Funa. As we're on KDE, the most natural choice is going to be Dolphin. However, that does lead me to believe that perhaps Dolphin isn't the default file manager. So while we are in the live environment, we're gonna go ahead and open the file manager. And as we can see there, it's actually using PCMan FM as the file manager, which makes me think that is the default on their KDE version. So what we're going to go ahead and do is choose Dolphin as well as Ranger, which is a nice terminal based file manager. And I'd like to see the selection of file managers in the actual installation screen. Next, Europe London is good enough. And English UK is indeed the layout. And we're just going to test it quickly to make sure the keyboard isn't behaving strangely. And now we've got to the part where we're going to start partitioning our drives. Now we're going to use the Drevo X1 SSD and we are going to do the middle option here which is erasing the disk and letting the installer create the partitions for us using the default layout. So we're just going to go ahead and press erase disk and it does give us the option to configure our swap. So we can have no swap, swap with Hibernate or swap to a file. I always use swap with Hibernate on my own machine so I like to test that out on distributions that I check out on the channel. So as you can see here that's going to give us three partitions. One for our EFI, one for our swap, which is going to be large because I've got 32 gig of RAM and it needs enough to suspend to disk with full hibernation. And then we have the rest all assigned to our root partition using the default file system, which is of course ButterFS. Next. Okay, user account time. We're just going to keep it super simple and call this one KDE. We're going to type in our password and we are going to log in automatically without asking for a password. And we're going to use the same password for the administrator account. Okay, so that's everything. So as soon as I press install, the installation will start. So I'll pause the video here and come back once this has finished. Okay, so the installation has complete and it took around about five minutes on my machine. With that being said, what we're gonna do is reboot and check out our freshly installed Payx OS feature in KDE. Okay, so we've just booted up off disk and unfortunately it's taken us straight to the login screen, which means it hasn't really taken any notice of the options that we set in the installer for auto login. With that being said, it's a very nice login screen, so let's just quickly go ahead and type our password and get to the desktop. Okay, so here we are at the desktop, and actually there are a few options in the welcome screen that wasn't present when we were checking it out in the live environment. So we have the same links to join the community, 
but then just below it we have what they call the tweak zone. So here we have options for face recognition setup, layout changer, we'll definitely be checking that out, install add-ons and then remove welcome app to uninstall it entirely. Now just below it we have a little thing here that says toggle, it doesn't really say what it does, but I'm going to assume that's just going to remove the welcome screen from your startup to stop it starting up when you first boot up your system. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's check out face recognition setup. It's not something that I'd usually use on a desktop, but let's have a little look. Right, so I'll open up a terminal window that says Howdy, configuration menu. To read more about it, check, and then they have the URL there for the face recognition. A restart your system after completing the setup. So I do have a secondary camera actually plugged in, so let's go ahead and check how this all works. So we have a few options. Number one is test CPU capability. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to type in one, checking whether your CPU is capable of AVX or AVX2 or not. AVX instruction set is not found. You can continue with the setup. I don't know if it will work without that, so let's give it a go. So next up, we can configure the device. Let's press two. It's going to ask us for a password. So setup is now configuring your device. So that's completed configuring our device. So it's found a camera at dev slash video zero. It's changed the path. Certainty should not be more than five. Setting timeout to equal 10 seconds. And it's now enabling face recognition for our actual login screen. Okay. So I guess that's done. So now we need to set up our face model by testing free. Okay. Right. If your processor is not capable, then face model might fail. So we might not actually be able to get this to work, but we'll give it a go anyway. Enter a label for this new model, we'll just call it Tyler. Please look straight at the camera. Okay, so a new model has been added for Tyler. Interesting, and in pressing forward we can test the camera feed, because I don't even know what the camera's pointing at. Check whether your image is being captured or not. There he is. It's in black and white. How very interesting. Right, how do I close this? Escape. Enter. Okay. So I guess that's taken a model of our face. We'll, we'll test that out when we do a quick log out in just a moment. Interesting. We could then just press 5 to quit. Okay, I'm not sure if that's worked or not, but we'll definitely check that out in just a moment as well. So where's our welcome screen gone? There we go. So we are now back at the welcome screen. Next up, we have the layout changer. So let's go and see what other different desktop layouts we can use on the KDE version of Payx OS. Okay, a little underwhelming. It appears to just be moving the um, widget and the panel around. So before we start chain, before we start testing them out, let's actually have a look at the default layout. So top right, we have a nice little widget here, which tells us the date and time. And then we have our panel on the left. I'm usually more of a top or bottom panel kind of guy, but as long as it's not on the right, I'm pretty much all good. So we have our application launcher at the very bottom, which is the newer version that was released and in, introduced in the most recent version of KDE. With our categories to the left and some quick places button as well as hibernate, restart, shutdown and all of that good stuff. We then have our system tray icon, icons there and then we have another little button to then reveal our status and notifications. Now, I'm not sure if this is in the icons only task list or not because it's been put on the left. I think it does something funny to sort of reserve space. So if we go on to show alternatives, we can see that we aren't using the icons only task manager. We're actually using the standard task manager. OK, so we have a few pinned applications here and then we have our date and time or just the time on here. But if you hover over it, you can see the date. I do believe that's a notification button, it is indeed, so pressing that button will then reveal the notification shade from the right hand side of the screen, which at the top has your date and time, you then have some media playback buttons and controls, and then just below you have a quite a nice little widget there letting you know your sort of system information and system resources, very nice. So that's the default kind of layout, and then just to finish it off we also have our user switcher at the top, where we can start a new session, jump into the lock screen and leave. While we're here, let's quickly check out the lock screen. Okay, pretty standard stuff with a nice little wallpaper. Let's go ahead and log back in. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's check out the different layouts. So all it appears to be doing is changing the actual position of the panel and the widgets on your screen. So we're currently in a default with our panel at the left and our widget at the bottom right. Now I'm not really a right paneled kind of guy, but let's see what it looks like with the panel on the right. 
So I don't think that's really going to change anything too much in sort of as so far as the task manager or anything like that, because it's the same sort of dimensions on the other side of the screen. But as you can see, there is our panel and our widget is now at the top left. Now let's check out the bottom layout, which is more of a traditional kind of KDE layout. And I can just about make out that it does have the title bar sort of names of the applications there in the actual task manager itself. So let's go to the bottom. And there you go. So you can now actually see the names of the applications. And it looks like quite a large panel. So it's a bit larger than what I'd usually have. It is indeed. So it's set to 40, but we'll leave it on 40 for now. Now let's close that and then check out the last one, which is a top layout. So as I said, I'd usually either have it at the top or the bottom. But for the duration of this video, we're going to stick with the default layout and use it how it's intended to be used out of the box. There we go. Like I said, I'd like to see some additional layouts, perhaps introduce a dock like Latte or something like that to really change things up a bit. But other than that, I guess it's nice to have a quick sort of one click to move things around. OK, so that's pretty much everything. No, it's not. We then also have install add-ons. Let's give this one a go. So again, it's going to open up a terminal for us and it's going to give us a few options. So choose an option. We can add a pen test repo of Arch Strike. We can go for some audio or video applications, browsers, gaming emulators. We can install Plasma Wayland. So as default, we are using X11. So if we quickly open up the system information, as you can see here, we are using KDE Plasma version 5.21.3 and the graphics platform there is X11 and the kernel version is 5.11.6. We can also install KDE applications, install KG, uh, KJ, ugh, KJK fonts, password managers, programming and development, graphics terminals, torrent clients, virtual managers, and quit. So we'll test it out with a torrent client. So we're going to go ahead and type in 12. And that's going to give us an option of Deluge, Qubit Torrent, or Transmission QT. So let's go ahead and install Transmission QT by typing in 3. It will then ask you for your password. And then it's going to run the install command and then all you have to do for user input is either press y for yes or n for no so let's go ahead and do that and there we go so a very simple sort of easy way to install some additional applications from your welcome screen and that will now appear in your application launchers okay so that is now everything in the welcome screen so what we're going to do is close off the welcome screen so i do believe we have got it right there we put the toggle there i'm going to leave it like that and now let's start taking a look around at things so before we make any sort of changes and stuff, we're going to quickly see some system information here. So as you can see, we are using Fish 3.1.2 and package wise, we have 1325 native applications. Windows Manager is of course Kwin, the Windows Manager theme is Reversal and then the theme is Breeze Light for Plasma and the icons are Papyrus. And interestingly, our default terminal is actually the XFCE terminal and not console, which you typically find on the KDE distribution. So I wonder if we have console installed at all. We don't. So it's going to be using XFCE4 pretty much out of the box for all of your terminal needs, unless you want to go ahead and choose a different one or install console. You might notice that the theming doesn't look quite like what you'd expect for just standard Breeze. So our title bar is looking a bit different. So what we're going to do is go into global theme package and see quite what's going on here. Okay, so we are using Breeze Light. We also have Breeze Dark and then we have Breeze Twilight, which is a sort of a combination and mixture of the two. So let's go into some application styles. There we go. So the application style is using a theme set in Covantum, which we'll check out in just a moment. Plasma style is Orcas, and in the Windows decorations is Reversal, which is where we're getting these little colored buttons from. Now we are going to quickly check out the fonts as well because one of my complaints about their GNOME version, I wasn't a massive fan of the fonts, but from what I can tell so far, this is quite a nice, clean, simple font. So the font it's using is Cantorell and the fixed width is Hack 10 PT and then the rest is all Cantorell. So no complaints there. So what we're going to do now is check out some of the default applications. We already know there's quite a bit there just by looking at the package list of 1,325. Okay, so let's start in development. So we have CMake, Cuttlefish, Electron, GTK Demo, Icon Browser, Plasma Engine Explorer. We then have the Theme Explorer and the Plasma Theme Explorer, Print Editor, User Feedback, Console, and a Widget Dura Factory. In education, we have Mathematics and Science. I'm going to just assume that both of those are going to be 
LibreOffice Math as we've installed LibreOffice suite of applications. So in mathematics, it is indeed maths, and then in science, it's also math. Graphics wise, we have Flameshot, LibreOffice Draw, and then the Ristretto Image Viewer. Internet, so we have the SSH and VNC server browsers. We then have Discord installed out of the box, and if you'd like to join the Tyler's Tech Discord server, there'll be a link in the description below. We then have Onion Share, we have the Tor browser, and we installed Transmission Qt from the install add ons in the welcome screen. And your default web browser is going to be Waterfox Classic, which, as far as I'm aware, is like a free and open source alternative based on Firefox, I do believe. But there we go. Let's keep it moving. So, that was pretty much everything in internet. Now, in multimedia, there appears to be quite a bit. So, we've got all of the LSP plugin stuff. We then have Calf plugin pack for Jack. We have Caden Live installed out of the box, which makes my life a whole lot easier. We then have L Player, which appears to be quite a sort of a minimal, small sort of music playing application. I'm not super familiar with it though. And there we go. We'll um, we'll test some media playback with L Player and some video files and stuff towards the end of the video. We then have MPV Media Player. We have Pulse Audio Volume Control and Pulse Effects. We have the V4L2 Test and Capture Utilities and Shortwave. So in Office, we have a Blue Mail. We then also have Joplin which is quite a cool little sort of note-taking application that can be sort of synced across sort of cloud services as well. I think you can do it on Nextcloud and I'm pretty sure you can also do it on Dropbox and it's multi-platforms, you can get it for Android, iOS and all of that good stuff. We then have the full LibreOffice suite and it will be the fresh package, so it'll be a nice up-to-date 7.1 something version of LibreOffice, so if you're going to help and about we can see that we are using LibreOffice version 7.1.1.2. Very nice. So that's pretty much everything in Office from what I can tell. And of course, we also have Blue Mail as well, which is not an email client I've really used much outside of Payux OS on Linux. However, they do have quite a decent Android application. Settings wise, we have Add or Remove software. So this is where you're going to install most of your packages. And of course, pressing these three little dots right up here. And going into preferences, you can see that we have AUR, Snap, and Flatpak support. So I knew about the Flatpak and the AUR. I didn't know about Snap. So if we go into a terminal and type in Snap List, we don't have any Snaps installed, but we already knew that. And we'll do the same for Flatpak as well. And of course, we have no Flatpaks installed either. Interesting. And that does lead me to something that I'm going to spend a bit of time checking out in a moment. There's a new application included in this called Ba'u, I think it's pronounced. And it's kind of like a multi-universal application manager all-in-one kind of store sort of thing but we'll check that out in a moment as well okay so is there anything else in settings that i want to take a look at we have the firewall configuration and we have covantum manager so in covantum manager the active theme at the moment is white sir and if we go into change and delete themes we can see what other themes we have got out of the box so we have reversal we have material dark and we also have a layon which is pretty much my favorite theme for KDE. So I think what we'll do at some point is also download the global theme of Layon and then we'll just set it all up to use Layon. So we've got a nice sort of uniform dark theme across all of our desktop and applications. But for now, we're going to leave it on white, sir. OK, we then have the welcome center, which we've already taken a look at. We then have the Payx Plasma layout changer, print settings, system settings, and then the XFCE terminal. Now in system, we have again the add or remove, and now we have the application that I was just talking about, which I'm quite interested in checking out. So this is called Ba'u, and that is the pronunciation. I checked their GitHub before we did this video. So let's have a little look at this. So it's gonna look for some suggestions of applications, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna test it installing every sort of application type that it has. So it has app images, flat packs, and snaps. So this is the main page. I believe these are just kind of suggestions at the moment. And then we have a few buttons down here. So this one is for click here to show some application suggestions, which is the main page that we are currently on. We then have click here to choose a theme so we can change the theme from Light, Dracula or Sublime. We then have a little settings here so we can also manage our web applications as well. So let's go ahead and check that. Now we can do some more information. So we've got general interface tray because it is a tray icon backup and then we have individual options for each sort of universal packaging format so we have app image flat pack and snap 
and then we also have web there as well okay very interesting so far so we have a search bar at the top and then we have a few little boxes here so we can change it by type so we can press that arrow and then we can filter by type so at the moment we're kind of in no category so it's showing suggestions for all of them so if we wanted just some suggestions for snap we press that and then there is all the sort of like suggested applications to install for snap and then of course the same can be done for Flatpak, and the same can be done for app image now the one i'm most interested in checking out is actually the app image because there's not really been a good sort of storefront or application sort of manager for app images much like there has been for Flatpak or gnome or like a snap using gnome software or something similar so we're going to check it out by installing one of these suggested which is etcher but before we do that we're going to test out the search functions as well but we're going to do it in sort of any type so for example let's say LibreOffice. we're going to type in libra hit enter and now that's going to search through all of those sort of different packaging formats and then as you can see we have a ton of options there of 191 so we can go ahead and install them and all of that good stuff. So what we're going to do now is go back into App Image. I would have thought we'd find LibreOffice for App Image because you can actually download the full LibreOffice suite as an App Image from their website. But let's go back and show the suggested applications. And we're going to go ahead and install the App Image of Etcher and see how that does everything. So we're going to go ahead and press Install. So install Etcher App Image on your device. Yes. So that's now downloading the app image and then what I'm going to assume it's going to do is use chmod plus x to make it executable and then it's going to sort of integrate it in our application launcher and the rest of our system by copying uh, the .desktop file into local share applications. I'm not sure where it's actually going to put the app image itself. I usually put it in my home folder under a folder called applications. But now that that's installed, so that should now appear in our application launcher. So we should be able to just type in etcher hit enter and then give it a second or two and there we go so that's worked pretty flawlessly so I'm quite impressed with that for the app images so far so what we're going to do is open up our file manager and now we're going to just show our hidden files for a second and go to dot local share applications and here is the dot desktop file that is just created so if we go into open with Kate which is our text editor we can actually see where it's putting the file itself under exec so it's putting it in local share. Okay, so it's sort of creating directories there, bar, uh, Batu app image installed, etcher, and then there is the actual app image itself. Okay, very cool. I really like that, especially for app images. Let's now test it out for some of the other formats. So let's go for Snap. So what have they got on the suggested for Snap? Chromium, I tell you what, let's go ahead and test it out with Chromium. So install Chromium Snap on your device, yes. This time it's going to ask you for a password and it will probably also ask you for a password for Flatpak. Do you want to generate a system copy before proceeding? And this is under backup. I'm just going to say no for now. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video here and then we'll come back once that's finished. Okay, so our Chromium snap package is now complete. It took a little bit longer than the uh, app image, but as you would expect. And as you can see, our wallpaper has actually changed during the time that I was installing. Much like the other versions that we've checked out of Payux OS, the wallpapers will change on a nice little sort of interval. And it's usually a very nice selection of wallpapers. I've not really seen any terrible ones so far. However, let's go ahead and see if we can launch this Chromium package using the Snap. So it'll take a few seconds to load. Actually, the Snap loading time has got a bit better from the last time I used it. That wasn't too bad at all. But there we go. So there was Chromium working with the Snap package from the Batu application front kind of thing so what we're now going to do is test it out with Flatpak. so let's go ahead and change it to Flatpak now and let's see what suggestions we do have so we already have a native application of discord i do remember seeing so what we're going to go ahead and do is let's just let's just grab spotify it's the first one there it'll be nice and easy now this will also ask you for a password i reckon so let's go ahead and press yes no yes oh wrong button However, it didn't ask us for a password, so unlike the Snap packages, Flatpak didn't ask us for a password. Okay, so our Flatpak installation of Spotify has complete, and the whole repositories that are all going to be coming from from the Flatpaks is, of course, flathub.org. Okay, so we can just press play on here, and then that should launch Spotify pretty much instantly, and there we go. Do you know what? I think this is a really cool application. 
I think it's a really good thing for new users as well to have like a one-stop place for all of the applications and there's pretty much going to be anything you're looking for in between all of those options there so between Flatpak, Snap and App Image, you're pretty much covered with all of the different applications that you can get from there and it's a pretty easy sort of click to install type of password if it's a snap click yes a couple of times and you're good to go very impressed with that i'll leave a link to the github page for this in the description below okay cool let's keep it moving so that is in settings i do believe or was it system it was system and then we have the tray as well so we then have the zero conf browser we have the butter manager which is another sort of way to sort of manage your butterfs file system we then have conky which is for widgets we have Dolphin that we chose to install in the installer. And then we have Fire Tools, which is something I've shown on the other versions of Payox OS so far. And it's a little way to kind of sandbox your applications. And as you can see, we have a few here already. So for example, we just double click any application in here, and that's gonna now sort of open it up in a jailed sort of sandbox environment. Very cool. And then we can just right click that to quit it and then keep it moving. So what else do we have in settings or system, sorry? We then have HTOP installed out of the box, so we'll check how much RAM this uses in the fresh boot in just a moment. We then have Ranger, which we installed um, in the installer. We then have Time Shift as well, and we will quickly set this up, and then we're gonna run an update, and we're gonna show you how the auto snapping features of these system upgrades work as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and press next. We're gonna use that bad boy right about there, and we're gonna leave it on the daily. So as you can see, we currently have no snapshots running and you can also see that we have the wobbly windows. So what we're gonna do now is open up a terminal. In fact, let's do it the GUI way with the PAMAC manager. So we're gonna open up PAMAC. And then we're just gonna check for some updates and then that should also create a snapshot just before we do that in the um, time shift. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that. There's quite a bit to get of 323 MB. So I'm gonna pause the video here and come back once that update has finished. Okay, so the update has complete, but it is telling us a restart is required to take effect. However, that works out good for us because we want to see if that sort of face recognition has worked in our login screen. So let's reboot and check things out. Okay, so we're just booting back up, but I'll quickly show you the grub screen because here you can actually go in, go into older snapshots with a max limit of 50. So we can hit enter. And as you can see there, there is two of the auto snapshots that were taken by time shift and we'll show you them in the actual time shift window once we are back on the desktop. So we're gonna press escape, hit enter, and get to the login screen. Okay, moment of truth. I don't know how any of this sort of facial recognition stuff works. Do I just click there and something happens? That's just the settings. No, I don't think our camera has been compatible. I didn't think it would be though. So it's taking a second, so I think we have, and my webcam camera light is just turned on, interestingly, but I don't think anything actually happened there. I could be wrong, but there we go. So before we open anything up, let's jump into our terminal and type in HTOP. And we are using just about a gig there, or just under at 922 MB of RAM. And as you can see, we have a nice big swap partition that we will test out with hibernation towards the end of the video. Okay, so I don't know if that facial recognition actually works. The camera light very briefly turned on for a second though as we did log in. Now we're gonna quickly open up time shift to show you that it has indeed, much like that we saw in the grub screen, we have two snapshots there. So for some reason it's taken two, but as you can see in the comments there, we have time shift auto snap. So if anything broke in that update, we could go back to a previous snapshot, investigate what's going on, and then make any changes that we need to get things back up and running how we expect them to. Okay, so pretty cool. Let's go back into our application launcher and see if there's anything else we need to check out. So we were in system, so we have time shift, and that's pretty much everything. And we also have the USB image writer and USB stick formatter. Now we do have one more category here, which is utilities, and that's where it's put our app image for Etcher. So we have Butter Manager again, we have Clam TK, which is the virus scanner, Emoji Selector, Fire Jail Configuration Wizard, Kate is our text editor, Cavantum. So we do have Latte Doc installed, so I think in future versions it would be nice to see them integrate Latte Doc in the layout switcher and give us a kind of a panel at the top, dock at the bottom, or you know, variations on that kind of layout utilizing Latte Doc. 
And we then have PC Man FM, which is quite sort of interesting to see on the KDE desktop. However, it's all QT stuff, so don't see why you wouldn't have it there, but there we go. So we have three file managers now. We have Dolphin, we have QT Man, uh, I always forget how you say this, hold on. PC Man FM or whatever it's called. PC Man FM QT. And then we also have Ranger, which is the terminal based file manager. Okay, right. What I want to do now then is quickly go through some of the settings and see what they have changed. And then we'll start doing some media test playback and also test out the hibernation. So, what we're going to do is open up K Runner, type in system settings, and jump straight into the settings. Now, thanks to the newer versions of KDE, we have this button right here. And then we can see what has been changed from the default KDE stuff. So we already know there's a lot of changes in the appearance, not so much in the global theme part, but in the sort of application style and the plasma style we do know. And then of course the icons, we have the Papyrus icon theme, which is your default, but they also have the Teller icons as well as circle and purple. And that's probably one of my favorite icon packs when I'm using KDE. And there's also been some nice changes to the splash screen. So we have the Quark splash dark materia, which is what you just saw when we logged in. But there is it in case we didn't see it. Very nice. Let's go back. Now we have some changes in workspace behavior. So let's go straight down into screen locking and see what's changed in screen locking. So the lock screen automatically starts after five minutes and after waking from sleep. And the keyboard shortcut is meta and L, and then you just press that shortcut and it will take you straight to the lock screen, like so. Okay, and it's not actually changed, but we are going to go into virtual desktops and see what they've done out of the box. So we have two out of the box, and is it Control Alt left and right? It's not. So what we will do is jump into the shortcuts and see what the shortcuts are for navigation and KWIN and all of that good stuff. So let's go back. Now we have window management. So all that appears to have changed here is the task manager. So I tell you what, let's open up a few applications and see what the task manager looks like. So using Alt and Tab, we've got a nice kind of full screen preview of the application windows there and you really can see exactly what is going on. I quite like that. Okay, let's get back into our system settings and close some of these other windows. Okay, that's pretty much everything in window management and now we're going to go into shortcuts and we can also check out what shortcuts we're using for the switching of desktops and all of that good stuff. So they've implemented their own sort of shortcut for the mail client which is Control alt and m so pressing that is going to open up the blue mail desktop email client any second now there we go so let's just close that for now we then have uh, shortcuts also for pc man fm so we can just press Control hold wrong one Control alt and h and then that will take us straight to the pc man fm file manager if you wanted to you could change that over to dolphin if you'd prefer so system settings, so we can jump straight to the system settings, which is what we're currently on using Control Alt and S. And then they also have a shortcut for the Waterfox browser, which is Control Alt and W. So that will very quickly just launch up your web browser with that keyboard shortcut. And then we have one for the XFCE terminal, which is of course going to be Control Alt T. I'll probably go ahead and install console myself if I was to use this for an extended period of time. And then we have a few differences here for activity switching. So activate application launcher widget with control and space. Activate application menu widget with meta and space. And then activate menu X widget with alt and F1. Now what I want to do is jump straight into KWIM. And then just type in desktop. Oh, it's got Cronkite installed out of the box as well. That's very nice to see. So Cronkite is a nice little tiling sort of window manager script for KWIM. And we'll, um, we'll jump into the K-Win in just a moment and you can see how that all works. Very cool. I'm a massive fan of Cronkite. So again, that's a very cool thing to see. And then we have a few sort of different shortcuts here for Latte Dock. But now that we are in K-Win, we're just going to go ahead and type desktop in the, sh in the search bar there. And so by default, we have control F1 to F4 for the different virtual desktops. So for example, we could jump to the second desktop with control F2. And then back to the first one with control F1. And that by default is using the desk cube animation as opposed to the fade or the slide. Okay, and then we can show the whole desktop grid with control and F8. However, we only have two. So it's not going to be kind of like a whole grid, but there we go. And of course, you can always just move applications in and out of that much like you can on any other KDE desktop. 
okay and do they have ones for just left and right they do indeed so it's meta control shift left and right so it's meta control shift that feels like quite a lot of keys to use just for switching a desktop personally but there we go you can always change that away from the defaults okay so that's a shortcut so now we start up and shut down we have got the payux os clairvoyance but we also have breeze eleron maldives and maya then in background services we have got quite a lot going on here so anything that you don't need there you could always sort of remove if you didn't need it so for example don't need touchpad we don't have touchpad but you know go through that if you like now for your desktop session it is going to start with an empty session which is what i prefer i don't really unless i'm sleeping or hibernating i don't want to sort of shut down my computer and then start up and it try to sort of repopulate my screen with applications that were there when we summoned the shutdown okay all good so far now we have some changes for the file search we've got the home folder there and then krunner i am going to send to krunner i much prefer krunner as kind of like a free floating window so now if we go into our next workspace pest control space and then krunner will open up in the central part of your screen which kind of just looks a bit better to me anyway so now let's go back to our first desktop and that's pretty much everything there for search so what else have we got any other changes we don't appear to so let's jump into the kwin scripts where are you well, there you go and here we have cronkite so we can go ahead and enable cronkite by doing that and now that is going to automatically tie all your applications it's always a bit funky there we go with system settings but there we go so if we close some stuff and then start opening things You'll see this automatically going to just start tiling your applications in a nice little layout so it's going a bit weird at the moment so i don't know sort of what geometry they're using but there we go so let's open up one more thing let's open up a new terminal window so let's go to start a new instance and there we go i think the widget there is having a bit of a interference with the actual tiling so if you was to use this yourself you might want to look into that and perhaps actually just disable the widget entirely but what we're going to do now is just close all of these applications once more yeah see the widget is kind of moving all over the place because of the way the tiling's working and then as you can see it's kind of not anywhere it's supposed to be so if we go back into the desktop layout switcher i tell you what let's turn off cronkite first so let's go back into kwim and we're just going to disable cronkite for the moment so let's just do that and click apply now we should just be normal free floating again there we go so what we're going to do is open up our layout switcher and see if we can get the um widget back where it sort of belongs so we're just going to press default layout again and now that should reconfigure our desktop and put our widget back at the bottom right so yeah if you was to use cronkite you might want to look into sort of either just removing the widget or doing whatever you need to do to stop it from kind of interfering with the placement of your windows when they are automatically tiling like that now before we do a media playback i do want to just check out if there's any additional stuff in accessibility settings or things like that because recently someone in my discord made a great point of how it's often overlooked sort of accessibility features and how there are certain people that do have you know any issues at all that might make them using a desktop a little bit harder than it needs to be and it's good to have accessibility features that make using a computer easier for everyone so we're just going to go ahead and go straight into the settings as I don't think there's anything additional on like a distro level that's actually installed. So we're just going to go straight into the system settings and check it out in the accessibility here. However, you're not going to have a lot here because it's kind of limited on what KDE is going to give you. So we have bell. So we've got an audible bell and we can change it for a custom sound or a visual bell. We then can change the modifier keys, get some feedback. So ring system bell when locking keys are toggled, etc. So there has been some changes to the keyboard filters. So we can enable slow keys. We have ring system bell. So when any key is pressed or when any key is accepted or rejected. Then in mouse navigation, nothing really has been enabled here, but we can use the number pad to move the cursor. We can, when a gesture is used, display a confirmation dialog, ring the system bell or show notification. And then we have acceleration, repeat intervals and time, maximum speed and acceleration profile. And then last but not least, we have the screen uh, screen reader however it appears that orca screen reader is not installed please install it before trying to use this feature and then log out or reboot so that but might be something that could be worth doing on a dish show like this is maybe pre-installing orca for those people that might need it but there we go 
Right, what I'm going to do is go and fetch my external SSD. I'm not sure where it is, and we'll see if it can automatically mount an XFAT SSD and then play some media files off of that. Okay, so it's recognized and mounted the external SSD without any problems. So here it is, and we're just going to go ahead and try and see what default applications open a video file with a .mp4, and we're going to see what happens when you open a .mp3 from within the file manager by just double-clicking on it. So we're going to go ahead and double-click on that and just make sure I'm muted. And here is the video that we recently done on the GNOME version of Payux OS. And it's automatically opened it up in the MPV Media Player. And Media Playback is working absolutely fine. Now what we're going to do is see what happens when we open up the YouTube banger of Scarlet Fire. And see why that opens it and up. There we go. So that's opened it up in L Player, which like I said is quite a minimal looking kind of music player. And you do get a little notification there when a the music is either skipped or playing, etc very nice now before we do a sort of hibernation test we're just going to open up default applications and see what we've got set for the default options so it's changed our default web browser to chromium which is the snap package that we just installed but of course the default would be water for uh, water fox classic file manager is dolphin but we've got as i said three options now so we can change it from dolphin to ranger or pc man fm and the email client is blue mail and your terminal emulator is xfce like I said, I'd much rather use console when I'm using a KDE distribution. So what we're going to do then is quickly, I'm going to change the theme around and then we'll test out hibernation. Okay, so I'm back. I've made a few changes to the theme and just a desktop layout, but nothing too drastic. So what we're going to do now is try and test out hibernation and we're going to summon it the GUI way. And like I said before in other videos, as long as all of the applications that are on the screen now are still there when we start back up from hibernation, everything has worked as one would expect so if it doesn't work the GUI way as per usual we'll also try and summon it via the terminal okay so we've just booted back up and it's taken us straight to the lock screen which is usually a good indicator that hibernation has worked correctly so let's go ahead and log in and as long as the file manager and waterfox are still there then hibernation has worked out of the box on payux os the camera again is just lit up so something's going on there with the um facial recognition stuff but there we go and there is our files uh, our applications right where we left them so i think i'm going to wrap up the video there but much like the other versions so far that i've checked out of payx os i really like it there's a few things that i think could be done better on this version in particular i think the layout switcher could be kind of broaded a bit more and have sort of implementations with docs or something like that and not just something that's moving the position of a widget one side of the screen as well as the panel but I do think the default look with the panel on the left is actually very nice and I could probably get used to that without any issues at all. I really like that it has ButterFS as its default file system. That's my preferred file system on my own machines. And I like the auto snapshot features enabled out of the box. I really did like that Batu application as well. That's the first time I've ever used it and it's nice to see that included in a distribution to make things easier for new users. As per usual, there'll be links for everything that you've seen in the description below. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and also join the Discord. There's a link in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.